I'm Matt Edwards and I'm the director of the Robert Burns Birthplace Museum, which is this wonderful new museum to Robert Burns here in the historic heart of Burns country in Alloway. And it holds the world's most important Burns collection, presented in, I think, rather innovative and, and surprising and enjoyable ways. Um, in fact, if you'd like to come in, I'll show you some of my favourite exhibits. Well, we're in the entrance of the museum exhibition here, and this introductory space serves to do a couple of things. One is to uh, let people's eyes adjust to the light that we need to preserve the different documents in, but really importantly, to, to uh, as, in the same way of uh, preparing their eyes, to prepare their minds and their hearts for the exhibition, to tell everybody that what they're going to see is something very special about a very special man. Um, and here, the first object that physically belonged to Burns and that begins to give you a sense of, of, of who the man was. And this is Burns's writing desk from his house in Dumfries and his chair. Um, and we wrestled for a long time with the idea of whether or not we should have a, a mannequin or silhouette or something of, of Burns when you came in. But we felt it was really important that um, we use the objects to tell the story of Burns rather than some kind of recreation of an imagined man. This is, this is the real man. So here you see the chair swinging back on its back legs in the same way that Burns recounts he used to write and the desk where he wrote so many of his greatest works. And in the background, the silhouette of a plough, the cornfield representing this other part of Burns' life, the fact that whilst he was very much a, an educated, intelligent man, a man of letters, he also every day of his life was a working man and was part of the community and part of the soil of Scotland. This section of the museum is all about the identity of Robert Burns, who was this man of parts, this complex man that we're trying to explore in the exhibition. And we do that through looking at the various objects associated with his relationships with other people. What was he like as a brother, a son, a lover, a parent? There's all sorts of things you can tell. Obviously, we've got some wonderful manuscripts and journals written by Burns where you can read in the poet's own own words, how he, he formed his various relationships with people and how that, that shaped him as a man. But also some really quite interesting and odd objects. Here we've got uh, a little tiny plaster apple which he gave as a wedding present to his brother Gilbert. And I think that's one of the things that makes this whole display really exciting. We have the, the formation of his poetry, the formation of his literature, but also the real man, his socks. Um, you can see what size his feet were. You can see how big his creativity is and that, that's the exciting stuff about it. Just as Burns used English and Scots we've done the same thing here so there's a lot of interpretation in modern Scots as well as interpretation in English and to really get the full experience of the museum you need to engage both with English and with Scots just as Burns himself did. It's a very very important part of the museum. The section of the exhibition that we're in now is all about the inspiration that shaped Burns and the world that he found himself in, his influences if you like, and a very, very important inspiration was, was his political belief and his very strongly held political values. Now Burns of course was a man who in his lifetime never enjoyed the right to vote. He wasn't considered to be wealthy enough or socially superior enough to vote because we take that for granted today. So he had to express his politics through poetry and through song and it's given us some of the, the best political songs and poems that this country has produced. Of course at the same time he had to balance his politics, which occasionally were unpopular, uh, with the society of the times. So on one hand Burns the patriot, Burns the nationalist, also had to be a, a loyal servant of the crown. He worked as an exciseman in Dumfries and here we have the, the pistols that he carried with him to, to protect himself. It wasn't a popular job being an exciseman. We have a replica of the uniform he was buried in, which was the uniform of the Dumfries militia, of which he was a, a founder. So on one hand he was a, a supporter of the French revolutionaries and the American revolutionaries. On the other hand he was part of a, a loyal defence force to protect Britain against the threat of French invasion. Um, also in this case, we tackle the issue of slavery. It's a, a slightly thorny issue because Burns, of course, famously wrote against slavery and was a, a passionate opponent of inequality. But at the same time, through financial reasons, I was forced to consider a job on a, a slave plantation in the West Indies and at one point was ready to leave Scotland and uh, take that job um, and participate in a system which he hated. And I think like a, a lot of us, Burns 
was often conflicted by the need to balance all of these different things. Never met and never parted. We this particular exhibit is one of my favourite because it has in it a very small object, but one which I think is the most iconic of the whole collection. It's this wonderful travelling pen set which belonged to Burns. It's the only pen that we have that survives from Burns. And um, it's as special to me as if it was old oh, Vincent van Gogh's paintbrushes. It's, it's the tool of the artist. And it's, it tells you a lot about what Burns was as an artist. It's a battered, small leather case with a couple of miniature goose quill pens in, a little bottle of ink, a little pen knife. It's the pen set of a working man, of an ordinary man, a travelling man, somebody who wrote when he was in the fields, when he was in the saddle, who wrote on any surface he could possibly write on, onto in walls or um, windows, the back of a banknote. And this is somebody who had no choice but to create. He was a, an artist through and through, but an artist who created within the community and within the countryside. He wasn't removed from his subject. And that makes him one of the most modern and, and one of the most truly human artists that this country has produced. Hear the wheel of burst and fetest. Bear the wheel well, this part of the exhibition brings us all the way to the end of the story, if you like. We've been through Burns's birth, his life, his work. And in this exhibit, we look at the impact that he had on the world. And one of the really remarkable things about Burns is he inspired this, what we call the, the second biggest birthday party in the world, something that no other writer has associated with them, which is the tradition of the Burns Supper, um, which happened very, very early. The first Burns Supper was celebrated in 1801 in Burns Cottage, just five years after Burns died. And it very, very quickly grew as, as Scottish people went throughout the world, as Burns' work went throughout the world, it, it grew into this huge tradition, which now hundreds of thousands of people celebrate. So here we just have a, a tiny sample of some of the many artifacts associated with Burns impact on the world. Everything from art inspired by him to a, a letter uh, written by the great Italian revolutionary Garibaldi saying how much he admired Burns. And, and, and we really saw how Burns became not just Scotland's bar, but you know, the, the world's bar. It's a very, very fitting place to bring this tour of the museum to an end. But of course, this has only been a taster of what this wonderful museum has to offer us. So thank you for joining us, but we're really pleased to see you back again soon.